What's poppin' dogs? Mr. Allen here with some geometry on the XY coordinate plane. We want to know, is triangle ABC congruent to triangle DEF? I'm dying to find out, man. Now, with figuring out congruent triangles, we're talking side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and maybe hypotenuse leg right angle if you got that one. But if we're dealing with the XY coordinate plane, we're likely trying to find some lengths, right? Distance formula or hitting it with some Pythag, whichever you prefer, or counting it out if it's horizontal. Let's start out with the counting it out if it's horizontal, because we got that right here, right? Between one to eight, right? The eights stay the same. So the X's are changing by seven. This has a side length of seven. Let's see here, from one to eight, that's also seven. Excellent, very good. We already got one side, no big deal, guys. All right, now let's find AC and BC, okay? So I'm gonna list it out like this. We'll say AC is equal to, because that's gonna say the distance between those two points. Now you can either, do distance formula, or honestly, my preferred method is hitting it with some Pythag because distance formula is actually just Pythag solved for on the XY coordinate plane, kind of cool. So if I drop down here in a sort of straight line and then over, I create this right triangle, right? I went down one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a side length of six and I went over uh, one, two. Okay, so we have the square root of six squared plus two squared. And you would get that as well if you did distance formula after a couple steps. I do love visualizing this though as Pythag because then you're connecting it to other times when maybe you're not on the XY coordinate plane. Kind of cool, kind of awesome. Also fun fact, apparently the Babylonians figured out Pythag like a thousand years before Pythagoras got Pythag, but he just branded it well, so he got the credit, man. All right. Anywho, fun historical fact, we've got uh, 36 and four. So 36 plus four, that's gonna give me square root of 40. Now, you could simplify this if you'd like, but since I'm not asking you to find the side length, it's not really a requirement for you to break this down with a factor tree. I'm just gonna leave that as AC equals the square root of 40. Cool? That's all I'm gonna do. That's all I'm gonna do on that one. Then, I'm gonna go orange for this. Let's find the other one here. I'm gonna be dropping down a bit going over and I'm creating that right triangle. So this one here, I've dropped down from eight down to two for my Y coordinate. So that's six. And my X coordinates are from three to eight. So we've got a change of five. All right, so let's Pythag with that. So I got BC, yeah, there we go, BC. Equals square root of, it'll be five squared plus six squared. Now you could also maybe set this up as like a, an X or a Y or A, B, whatever you want to do. Um, and then have it like A squared equals this squared plus this squared and solve it up to you. But I'm going this route because I'm making the video. Cool. Now I got uh, square root of 25 plus 36. So that's going to be 50, 61. Yeah. So square root of 61. And that's not going to break down at all. Not that I was going to do it in the first place because it's a waste of time in this situation here. All right, let's get over to the other one here. I think we can kind of see that it's gonna be this side is congruent to this side if they are going to be congruent, right? So I'm gonna start with that one and I'm gonna keep it in green as well to stay like organized in that way. So we're dropping down, let's see here about, let's see six, not about six, exactly six. So that's our right triangle. So we one, two, three, four, five, six, yep. And we went over two again, change from one to three and my X coordinates is two. From negative one to negative seven is a drop of six. Got our two sides. Oh my goodness, it is going to be the same. But let's show our work because this is math class and we always, always show our work. Shortcuts get you in trouble, man. Six squared plus two squared. That's gonna give me square root of, once again, 36 plus four, which equals the square root of 40. And another reason why I wanted to show that is because there are other ways to add to the same thing, right? It's not always gonna be exactly that. If this thing was rotated a bit, it could still possibly be congruent, okay? Um, we could still get the same value by adding two different numbers that are squared together. So best to just, you know, work it all out. Cool, awesome. And you know, we got time, we got time, man. I love mathing, okay? Love mathing with you guys. Let's draw this triangle in, Wee! Boom. I'm going from a negative one down to negative seven, that's a drop of six. From three to eight, that's five. So once again, now we got to ourselves, why did I say AC? My goodness, Mr. Allen, my goodness, that's DF, 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 there we go. My sincerest apologies. All right, here we've got EF, all right. So EF is equal to the square root of, 
We got 5 squared plus 6 squared. So that's going to be 25 and 36, which is the square root of 61. So now we have that they are congruent. Yes. By side, side, side. There we go, man. Yes, they are congruent by side, side, side. All of my corresponding sides are congruent. Therefore, it's congruent tri they're congruent triangles. Now, one, one quick thing here, like a what if. There are times where they might say, are these two triangles congruent? But we're also going to give you, I'll go in pink here. We're also going to give you that angle B is congruent to angle E. So maybe they'll say that, is this true? Also in the given angle B is congruent to angle E, okay? So if they did that, then really all I needed to do was get this side here, right? And this side here by counting, and then getting this side right here, which we know is the square root of 61 and the square root of 61. And now I'd have it true by side, angle side. So a little less work. Sometimes they'll set that up for you so that you don't have to do distance formula or Pythag so many times on like a test to save you a little bit of time. So if that does occur, know that you only need the two that are touching that angle. If it was angle A and angle D being congruent, then we'd be working with this side and the seven, this side and the seven, right? Hopefully the what if didn't confuse you a lot, but there are different scenarios that your teachers might throw at you. It's not always gonna be siding or side, side, side here because they could give you one of the angles, uh, one of the corresponding angles can grow. All right, that's about it on that one. That's dope. Love me some coordinate geometry. I hope you guys had a good time. And if so, like it, subscribe it, YouTube things. Peace out.